I've got to be free It ties me down inside This living day by day We're about 20 kilometres or so south of the town of Maradi in Niger in central West Africa. And this area here is, believe it or not, typical farmland where this country has over 15 million people, the majority of which are subsistence farmers, over 90%. And they live off what they grow in this sort of environment every year. Temperatures here can get well into the mid 40s. The rainfall somewhere around uh, 300 to 400 millimetres a year and in the last three years as you can see uh, it's been incredibly dry they've had below average rainfall each of those years the winds here off the Sahara are incredibly strong and days some days the visibility is down to 100 metres because of the sand all of the topsoil has been blown away but believe it or not this is where they grow their crops and it's an incredibly harsh environment to try and live and survive we're at Mars at Say, a demonstration farm that's been set up here by the International Aid Organisation, SIM. Located just outside of Maradi, remarkably, this farm once looked much like the region we just came from. The key difference here is that the native trees have been encouraged to regenerate and create an overstory to protect the crops. And these crop bays have been lined with the great Australian acacia. One of the great challenges of being in these countries and trying to help the people is to find ways to improve the agricultural productivity. And there's only really two ways in which we can do that. One is to improve the quality and the quantity of the things that they're growing. And two is to reduce the risk. In a country, in areas uh, like this, you have a huge risk each year of drought, wiping out your crops. And uh, most people don't have reserves to survive uh, for the crop to come next year. So that leads to mass starvation and loss of life. And the most common crops in these areas are species like millet. You can see some of the stalk heads here from when it was harvested last time. And sorghum's another species that's used quite regularly in these areas. What we're finding these acacias are doing is they're really helping with the productivity. One, because they provide a great windbreak and some of the Sahara winds are very strong and cause a lot of damage to the crops. So these are providing a great windbreak. Second of all, if you have a look on the ground, you can see a lot of little layer building up and there's humus in that and the organic matter is getting returned into the soil. These acacias are also a legume. So what they're doing is they're fixing nitrogen out of the air. And as the leaves break down and even in the roots, the fine root matter as it breaks down, that's returning nitrogen into the soil. So those things combined are starting to really improve the productivity of the crops that are being grown. In addition to these farming systems creating up to a 200% increase in crop yields, these acacias are actually enabling the farmers to diversify the products they grow and thereby reducing their risk. At just two years, these acacias 
are producing an average of two kilograms of seed per tree. Eating acacia seed is not new. There are approximately 50 species traditionally used by Aborigines in Australia. Unlike many of the local crops grown in West Africa, acacia seed is very high in protein, and this is a key ingredient in the fight against malnutrition. The seed is picked annually and either ground into flour or it's stored for later use. A further advantage is the resilience of acacia seed. It is so hardy that it can be stored for several years without deterioration. In contrast, local grains generally last less than six months. To encourage the acacias to seed more abundantly, every two years they tend to cut them off at about waist height and in doing so they're able to produce valuable firewood which can be either used by their own village or sold to buy food. Remarkably, some of these Australian acacias are displaying a real upright form. And that means in a period of three to five years, they can produce valuable posts and poles that can be used for building materials. Change. On wings of change